I'm going to go for a mustard. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I have a piece of property. Good. It's a little hard for me to get get through this, so bear with me. I am not a public speaker at all. I don't like crowds. I live in the middle of the woods. But I started putting my loved ones on this piece of property because it was so beautiful. Uh, I don't know if you can understand the way I feel. The trees, the trees gave shade to my loved ones. The wind would blow through them at the same time. Uh, my loved ones were able to look out across this pond. I mean, a beautiful little pond. And my chief of my tribe, he wants to be out there, and he wants that to become part of our tribe. Very. And we was putting this in the process before Sable Trail come along. So I'm trying to keep this as short as possible without any cussing, so. <laughs> and uh, when they come out here, Laura was out there. And when they taking them trees and just destroying everything, we have no place to put our loved ones now at all. No possible way. I mean, not the way it is. And... I have to listen to them working on that pipeline daily, 60 yards out my back door. I have a mother with dementia, which over the past two months has gone really from bad to, to worse. So that part of it gets to me. But just getting back to my loved ones part, our tribe is a small tribe, you have to understand, so we don't have a lot of big pool. But we're doing the best we can. We're fighting as hard as we can. Every time we go up against these people, they lie to us. We met with them, which uh, we got a different name for them. <laughs> for real. But but also, my family members are veterans. My dad served in. Korea. Uh, after he passed away, my mom met another man, and he's a World War II veteran. And my brother served over in the Persian Gulf, retired Air Force. And they decided, they told us, they promised, merrily, you know, they promised it was going around. My chief and his wife was out there. They promised him, we're going around, we'll leave your property. All I was asking for was a stinking 50 yards. That's it. Go around 50 yards. You'll still be on my property. I still fight you. But you won't be affecting my loved ones. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kim. You know, what they do, they come straight through it. You know, they took five foot of one loved ones and ten foot of another's. And just destroyed the, the property. And... Also, my wife's brother's out there, and her son, which is my stepson's out there. And she couldn't spread the ashes, so I did it for her. And I put them on a little blueberry patch, so the grandbabies come over. And this is just something for us, personally. That now I don't know how I'm going to tell them, but I always take them out there when the blueberries, the wild blueberries come in, and two, four years old. They're out there picking them little blueberries, and they know it as Uncle T.C.'s blueberries, you know? So, now what do I tell them? Uh, they come out on the weekends, and it's, it's hard for them to watch and see, and it's hard for me to watch and see. And I'm not going to get into all the rest, because I think it was pretty well covered. But I just wanted you guys to hear a personal private attack that was done. The only thing I can say is, are there any questions you have personally that maybe you might want to know about on that situation? Anybody have any questions at all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I sure have. Uh, now, I cannot promise they're artifacts. But tell me, 
515 miles, 100 foot wide. There's no reports on any artifacts. Right through where they're coming is known as Station Pond, which is a seminal area, uh, which pottery has been found out there. Pottery, a settlement, used to be out there. And they call it Station Pond because that's the old stagecoach where they used to come through. And before that, I think it was called Seven Rivers, I mean Seven Springs, the Seminole Nation there. So, yeah, and that's part of my property is, is along with Station Pond area. And I have found artifacts out there. So, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a brown Yes. Has any of them ever been reported by the Stokes Mortals? Because they don't think that they're required by law to report them. Has any of them ever been made? Not none that I've seen. Okay. Merrily, who are they reporting? Who are they giving the artifacts to or, or contacting about the artifacts that they're finding? You can come up here with me. I can probably yell better. There's a State of Florida cultural agency that they're reporting it to, and you can find that information actually in the bi-weekly reports that FERC puts out. Sable Trail is required to report any findings to the FERC. And every bi-weekly report, there was one I think that came out today, you do see references in there regarding artifact finding. However, the sad truth of it is they will then turn around, the cultural agency will turn around and consult with one of the tribal groups, and the tribal groups will say insignificant. Every time. There, now, there's other reports in there, interestingly enough, where it is recorded, and then they will tell you it's proprietary in nature, and you cannot know. And the reason for that, honestly, is for hounds, you know, like people that go out and dig up areas that shouldn't be dug up. Um, but nonetheless, it, it doesn't stop it. I mean, th these are cultural resources. What, what Mr. Kuhn is talking about, Station Pond, two seminal wars were fought there, the second and the third. True story. And, and the Civil War was fought there. And it is on two um, treaty lands that were treaty lands. It's on... Um, Moultrie Creek Treaty Land, and it is on um, uh, Payne's, uh, Payne's, Payne's, Payne's Prairie, but that's, it, it had a name, Payne's, Payne's Landing, Payne's Landing, thank you, Payne's Landing Treaty Land. So this is, this is very, uh, uh, um, land that was notoriously, not notoriously, that's not the right word, land that historically was indigenous for thousands of years and they're going right in these rural environments why they didn't um, li listen we all don't want it anyway because it locks us into fossil fuel but why they were able to go into these rural landscapes and decimate them when we have corridors we have highways we have i-10 we have i-75 had no need to go through georgia could have gone from alabama into florida and originally that was the plan um, the idea of going out into the rural environments and, and disturbing uh, natural corridor systems. We're seeing 500-year-old trees cut down for this system. You cut down a tree, it's not just the birds and it's not just the tree that gets to cut down. It's all of the species for generations that have gone, come and gone from that tree structure. Gone, decimated, corridors stripped away. It's, it's the most... Um, uh, shocking travesty in the state of Florida when you build a corridor nothing can go back, back through it and and the other thing um, is the vegetation that they put back ends up being invasive most of the seed that ends up repopulating that soil once it's been disturbed is an invasive seed seed that blows in the wind you know ends up in these disturbed soils so it's truly um, something uh, the most alarming thing and you know I didn't mention it before, and I'm taking your time, but um, it's not a gas pipe line until that gas is in the pipe. In the meantime, it's just a horrible construction project that should have been stopped and still can be stopped with public pressure. 
Uh, and the other thing is the cross barge canal, this was an idea back in the 1930s and 40s. They had an idea to cut through Florida and cre actually create a canal like the Panama Canal. And that one was a longer project, of course. You know, this is going in less than a year, less than a year, because they're not doing what the, what's required in the permitting process. If they were doing what was required in the permitting process, it would be a much more labor-intensive, longer time period of this construction project. The Cross Barge Canal, we were able to stop. It was another wicked, evil corridor. <laughs> we were able to stop that. And right now, in the Dunellen area, in the Green Swamp area, in the um, Crystal River area, this is kind of where the green swamp, well, it's not kind of, it is where the green swamp was. Uh, it, um, um, uh, it is where the Florida Cross Barge Canal in the Greenway was. It's the same corridor. It has an energy, if we want to talk about spiritual energy, it has, a, has an energy there where we believe this can be stopped in that area. And the green swamp is kind of like the, the line in the sand. They're talking about trenching the green swamp area five miles of wetlands. I can't even imagine what that looks like, especially regarding turbidity. I took it. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> and, and another problem I have with them, coming through my parents, or my people's resting area, they have the audacity, I found out not too long ago, to go around what we call the mud hole, the power line mud hole, where people go out there and play in their mud trucks and stuff. Now they're getting drunk and they get in fights and all this and make a lot of noise and they're putting a lot of oil in, in the water and stuff like that. But they go around them and they couldn't give me 50 feet. So, that's... That's all I have, unless, you know, like I said, any more questions, I'll be glad to answer them. <coughs> yes, sir. We have the same problem with people that do make a nice fight deal. They don't care about their own game. We're the only one objective. They didn't give us information. Check all the slides. Well, I, I asked them, I said, well, why, why aren't you having any Native arch archaeologists out here? Anybody coming out and walking the lines with the workers? I said, it's real simple. You're taking down the trees and everything. Let them look. Let them study. Let them find, you know? I mean, you're picking stuff up off the ground. Now, they do it so quick, I, I cannot I recognize what they're doing. Uh, Well, I've asked, I've asked, why can't, if you find anything, why not give it to their areas, tribes and stuff like that, so they got a record of it, you know, because I know my chief and, and his wife would love to have whatever artifacts they're finding in our area put up for a museum or explaining or, you know, for the history. Any other questions? Yes. Um, there's a. Don't take it. Okay. <laughs> I probably already did, but there's a place called Halpata Tasknaki Preserve, and it's in Donnell, and it used to be part of the ranch. Um, there's an old battle site there where uh, Osceola and I think Chief Alligator and Jumper. Um, ambushed General Gaines troops as they were crossing the Withlacoochee and there was a battle fought there. This pipeline is crossing the Withlacoochee not far from there, uh, within a mile I'm pretty sure. Um, all that area historically from Halpatatastanaki over down toward Gum Slough and the Cove of the Withlacoochee was Native American land. It was important Native American land. Um, I know somebody who's affected by the pipeline who has um, found um, evidence of the Native Americans having lived there 
even on other property I've, I've found evidence. Um, even where the pipeline goes, I recently found, uh, well, I found it last summer and I didn't know what it was. Now, this is not Native American. It was a, mas a fossilized mastodon tooth that was on the pipeline route, but apparently they don't care about that kind of thing. Maybe they'll run into a fossilized mastodon in the, in the wetlands there. I don't know. But I just, you know, how Patataskanaki is an important um, site there, and they're going through that and the Greenway. It's right there where the Greenway is. And I'll pass this on. You guys just all need to be aware of it. It has not been disturbed. It was actually, um, the, when it was sold to the state of Florida to preserve the water and the battle field and um, to protect it from development. And now they're letting that pipeline go through it. Our conservation lands. One more. One more. Question? Yeah. Well, kind of in response to what they're saying. Um, there is a whole division under the uh, Department of State. I used to work for the underwater archaeology side, side of it, but um, I also registered the ones that y'all are talking about, like out in the field. And building or in, of any kind, construction or anything, has to clear through them as to whether there's a potential um, site that you can register. Now, the difference in finding the occasional artifact and actually calling it a site and registering it is for them to go out and do the survey that's necessary. But they probably have a lot of those sites on the register have information about them already. If you're talking about all those wars taking place, battlegrounds and stuff, because, I mean, there are just literally thousands, millions of those sites around the state. And there may be some sort of alert for them to be called. Now, the main thing with them is it kind of needs to be in situ, in other words, in context, for them to actually declare a, a, a registered site with the state, then it has to tell the story like a village or, or that type of thing. But if you go out there, say like but if you start bond, disturbing it, they can't saying, come. If you're yeah. out there on the station, they will arrest you federally. Yeah. Yeah. They will arrest you federally. Yeah. But are they, have you seen them ever actively doing a dig on it, or has uh, anything been set up? What do you got? No, no. come back and take oh, the back, no. Yeah, that kind of thing, though, would be registered, whether it could be set up for that, if y'all protested enough, and ask, and that does halt the construction. Yeah. The problem is when they know you're trying to permit it, they run out there and disturb it with their machinery real fast if they get ahead of it. Yeah. And then it isn't a site, it's in perfect order. Shannon. Come on up.